Well, here we are at the uh, Boston International Book Fair. It's uh, November 11th, 2017, uh, Veterans Day. Uh, we're here at the book fair, and we're going to be interviewing Ed Hoffman from Hoffman Books in Columbus, Ohio. And Ed, if you would just give us some background on you, uh, your parents, or your, your siblings, your education, where you were born, where you went to, just take us up to to a mini biography. Great, Michael, thanks. Um, well, I'm, I'm uh, one of nine, uh, born and raised in Columbus, five boys and four girls in the family. And uh, my dad uh, sold cars uh, his whole career, 57 years, uh, new and used in Columbus. And um, uh, my mom raised all of us. And uh, actually, when dad retired, finally, for the sort of second time, um, we got to work together at the bookshop, uh, which was great, great fun. Um, he would call and say, uh, "I'll come up there if uh, if we can be productive," because <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know the bookshop back in those days uh, was kind of a social place I and mean, a gathering place. Yeah. And uh, you know he didn't he didn't want to come up and just sit around and yeah, have people talk. But um, wonderful uh, family, and uh, uh, the seven of the nine of us have stayed around Columbus. Uh, two got away, as we describe it. <laughs> or uh, escaped. <laughs> uh, one of them lives out in Cape Cod, and uh, uh, the other one's in New Jersey. But, uh, Where did you go to school? So then I went um, to uh, St. Charles High School, uh, and then to Ohio State, as most of us in the family did. Actually, uh, eight of the nine of us uh, wow. went to Ohio State. Well, stayed, Back in a simpler time when you just got on the bus and went up to school. Yeah. And, uh, uh, it wasn't as expensive as college has become wow. these days, but uh, it, was a, it was, I had a good experience there, and uh, I did English education, and then went back to teach. There are several teachers in the family, and uh, that was always an interest and in, uh, an influence on me, I think, and I, I went back to teach uh, high school English at the school that I had gone to in high school, St. Charles, and uh, I did that for about eight years, and uh, Enjoyed it, but then at a certain point decided to go back to Ohio State and work on a doctorate. And uh, uh, at that point, uh, just to pay bills, I started selling camera books. Um, my brother John uh, was also in school at that time, um, and he had started with a professor that we were all greatly influenced by, a guy named Bernie Mel. Uh, had gotten into uh, selling cameras as a sideline just to pay bills when you were in school. And that really was when I realized that um, you could sell books and there was a market out there and uh, and for used and out of print stuff and so that was really my introduction to it um, at a certain point in the early 80s um, i was doing that they had rented a, a, a little retail space uh, where they were going to put a camera shop and uh, that fell through but uh, a friend and i uh, decided we would open it as a bookshop and we did photography books and uh, that was really the beginning, that was 1982. Uh, <clears throat> my wife, uh, Tina, uh, is a nurse by profession, and it helped greatly in the early days that she was working she was as a nurse. <laughs> yeah, because it was, uh, you know, as everybody knows, uh, startup and, uh, and selling used books. But, um, but we, you know, it, uh, it, the business developed and grew, and. Um, and it was back in that day when you had regular customers, and uh, uh, it was a place that a lot of people gathered, and we had some real, uh, you know, good friendships developed through that that time. Uh, and we were in that space eventually for 25 years, um, and then uh, about uh, 11, 12 years ago, moved to where we are now. And then, of course, along the way, the internet happened, and, mm -hmm. and everything changed. But. Uh, 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 did I see you in your old shop or in your new shop? When the I the former shop, former uh, shop. Michael. Yeah, on uh, Where are Arcadia. Where in relation to that? We're just, um, you know, the, the main drag in Columbus is High Street, yeah. uh, where High State's campus is. And um, we were just off High Street on uh, East Arcadia for 25 years. And now we're further up North High Street. Um, actually, in a, uh, well, that's part of, part of our story, I guess. Um, a big part of my experience, ABA-wise, and the book fairs and everything else, was uh, meeting Robert Emerson. And um, uh, it, um, it was a great you know, mutual uh, friendship and relationship. Um, but um, 
when, when Robert uh, moved to Columbus, um, we landed in a building that had a second floor apartment. And so he lived above uh -huh. the bookshop. And, uh, and so uh, uh, Bob's been gone now since 2011. Uh, and, but my daughter and her husband uh, uh, live on the, in that apartment now above oh, us, so it's good. The early days with uh, selling, I, I've always loved selling to the trade and uh, selling to you know other booksellers. Um, and I think of um, many people in the early days, in the 80s, um, pre-internet, we wholesaled lots and lots and lots of books to uh, a lot of very wonderful uh, booksellers, um, including, uh, I think of Will Money. Uh, in Cooperstown and uh, Paul College in uh, Charlottesville. Yeah. I could just call them up and say, because Columbus has always been a pretty good book town, uh, yeah. professors, libraries and stuff moving in and out, and uh, uh, it, was a, it was a good place really to find books. And I could call them up and sell them a whole lot of books at you know two or three or four dollars per. And uh, it was crucial. It was uh, kept us going kept and kept us going, in the business, yeah. you know, uh, all the those rain. years. And, and then along the way, um, uh, this Bob Emerson uh, would make his treks across country, and uh, Tina would always say he was our guardian angel because he'd come at a perfect time <laughs> and buy everything good we had. And uh, and of course he was, you know, buying inventory to do the fairs. Yeah. Um, and uh, so so that's how we first, you know, of course, got to know Robert. Um, and then, really, in Columbus, um, with Bob, we bought um, what. As we, there's no getting around it. I used to say, hesitate to say it was the buy of a lifetime, but we bought the buy of a lifetime. It was a local collector <coughs> and bookseller named Paul North. I know. And, uh, yeah. yeah, he was he was a member of the ABA at one yeah. point back in the 70s, and uh, <coughs> everybody knew that he had good stuff, um, but I don't think anybody realized how much good yeah. stuff he had. I, I'm sure. And uh, we got contacted to take a look. Uh, it's a long story, but. Uh, Basically, um, when I realized and, and Robert realized how good it was, we told the banker that was representing it uh, that they should do a public bid because uh, they had no idea what they were yeah. you know, really handling. And uh, so we, um, we you know, put in a bid and uh, were able to buy it. And uh, you know, we've been selling that stuff ever since in a way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was lots oh, and lots yeah. and lots of stuff, literature and uh, Americana and all the rest. So. He had long has reprinted a lot of things as well yep. in his heyday. Yep. Like yep. Long's College Bookshop. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> North had done uh, lots and lots and lots of business with Long. <coughs> oh, yeah. And uh, uh, so, yeah, Columbus has that history, uh, really. Long, Long's was a, a really good rare bookseller back in oh, the yeah. 50s. And uh, we actually eventually then bought other good collections out of Columbus. One of them was uh, Frank Long's uh, books, which uh, came up at one point. And uh, a wonderful collector named Dwight Shipley, who was a long time uh, Americana collector yep. in Columbus. And so that really was uh, the, the, you know, the period when, with Bob, we were buying you know, lots and lots and lots of books. And, and then eventually I got to do the fairs you know, with Bob, so yeah. <laughs> Did uh, Bob move out to Columbus after his wife died? Dorothy was deep into Alzheimer's, and um, tell and, me about it. And it was an incredibly difficult time, yeah. and, and uh, so um, she actually lived after, uh, lived on after Robert, and, and uh, well, passed away now about three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a tough, tough thing. So we we really kind of adopted each other. Yeah, and, uh, sounds and, like fun. And Dorothy was in a good uh, institution and had good care, and, and you know when. Uh, Robert and I would go on the road or come to the Boston Fair, we would you know, stop and see Dorothy, but it, it got more and more and more difficult. She, and, was, uh, she was really bad. So his, I mean, his spirit uh, of Robert, of just, you know, keeping going, yep. and uh, he loved the fairs, and uh, so really, um, we would do uh, Boston and California. And he and Dorothy had driven out to California for, you know, 35 years and done uh, either LA or San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, and so I, you know, I got to do that with with him. So that that was that was pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, really it was nice. a good period for us. So you're married, and how many children? Tina and I have two. Um, we adopted uh, kids, a uh, boy and a girl, when I was 40, and then uh -huh. uh, Gracie came along when I was 42. Uh, so a late start on that, but a wonderful, uh, just a fabulous thing. And uh, 
Yeah, uh, like I say, our, our daughter Grace is married now and lives above the bookshop, and our son Peter uh, works in Manhattan. But uh, none of your children have any interest in the book business? Well, we have a nephew uh, who's worked for us now, John Edward, for um, uh, 10, 10 plus years, and, uh, wow. and a great friend, a neighbor, uh, Karen Wright, who lives right across the street from us, who's also worked for us for uh, yeah, 12 plus uh, years. But uh, the kids, yeah, they've gone yeah, different direction, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, I have four kids, none of whom are, seem to be interested either, so. Yeah. yeah, let them do their own thing. Right? Yeah, you gotta, you know, you, you you get the bug or you don't. I think. Yeah. I think, <laughs> well, sometimes it's like, like, um, oh, what's her name? Uh, you know, the the great old dom of the books trade who's no longer with us, uh, Maddie's friend. Uh, she used to she used to uh, say that she was she went to a she was in Germany and worked for a German bookseller, and he would tell her that. Uh, the only way you can really tell the value of a book is English sprechen, putting your hands, putting your hands, hands on, on it. it, putting yeah. your hands on it. Yeah. And so that was the one message that, you know, she, she had a good message about that. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. What, what percentage of your business uh, is done from, example, for, do you issue catalogs? We don't, okay. no, so, we don't. So In the early know. days we did with photography stuff, yeah. lists I would call them, but uh, we had to build up a mailing list, but that was a long time ago. Uh, so we've got books, um, well, we have about 25,000 books uh, online at ABA and Biblio and um, Abe. Uh, we used to be, and, and we're on Amazon, too. Uh, we were on uh, Libris back in the day, too. Um, Dick Weatherford that, you know, was involved in Interlock and then yeah. started Libris, uh, he was from Columbus and taught at Ohio State. Uh, I know. For I know. about 12 years. And our shop right now is actually on... Uh, near Westwood and High, and, <clears throat> and he lived on Westwood Street, so there's this whole, you know, book karma thing there. Have but, you been in touch with him lately? You know, not for a couple of years, but uh, he's uh, out in Washington and, and retired, I think he lives on P Puget Sound, yeah, he and does. Uh, Southwood. he's a fabulous, fabulous guy. Uh, I've been told that he's, uh, he's uh, suffering from Alzheimer's. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, 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 he's not very active, oh, and it's hard to he hear. He doesn't remember anybody, and that it's, is it's a tragedy. That's that's a tragedy. Yeah. the guy has a lot to say, but, but yeah. not anymore. Uh, it's such an insidious uh, disease, but uh, yeah, it's probably been three plus years since I had it. Well, yeah. apparently, it's happened in the last couple of years. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, I'm just surprised that you didn't know about it with the Columbus connection. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad but you anyway, mentioned that. but and what then, percentage of your business is like done with? from the shop and, and on the internet and uh, at book fairs. So those sure. are your three main venues. Yeah, so. and, um, and most of it is internet now, these days. Um, and we are also doing quite a bit on eBay. Yeah. Uh, we made that shift. Uh, actually, when after um, Robert had moved over, um, we started doing a little bit of eBay. My, my brother has the camera business. Uh, he kept encouraging us to take a look at it because uh, the vast majority of what they did was on it. And uh, I wasn't sure if Robert would um, embrace it or not, but he actually really enjoyed it um, and took to it and found it kind of um, fascinating in a way. He, 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 was, uh, he was constantly uh, charting what uh, countries or states we sold things to and to try to kind of analyze what sort of material you could put on and sell there. So um, he, he enjoyed it. and. Uh, and it, there's a sort of an entertainment factor to uh, eBay, I think, both for the buyer and uh, the, you know, the sellers. I mean, it's a, it's a sort of a constant, and you can sort of follow it and chart it. And uh, in our case, uh, too, we were sitting on lots and lots and lots of inventory, not necessarily rare books, but uh, specialized books. And, um, and the search engines have gotten so good now that you oh, can yeah. kind of target and focus material that way, so we're, we're doing a lot uh, there. Uh, Do you have any plans to expand the shop, or? I don't think so at this point. We've, uh, we're in a good space, um, and there's room uh, for what we lease? have. Pardon? Do you have a lease? Yeah, we're, uh, we're buying the building. Oh, and, that's and, the only way and to it's live. The, uh, yeah, I mean, it's the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the bookseller's uh, motto, the building, you know, and, and the property, but, uh, so that's, that's been a good thing. And um, 
So I think we'll, we'll, you know, we'll be there. We, we at one point at the peak of a lot of these uh, collections we bought and different things, we had 12 storage units. Oh, wow. And that you know gets so incredibly expensive. And just this past year, we, we shed the last one of those. Oh, that's great. So we've got everything kind of gathered together in one space. You have enough space now. Yeah. yeah. Well, is so, it a big shop? Or? Uh, it's about, the building is 5,000 square feet, um, uh, but you know half of it is the shop. So. What's and the, the reference library is upstairs. This apartment where my where my daughter and her husband live, and where Robert lived, although that also houses the reference library and, and all the rest of that up there. So, uh, um, no, I, th I think for the for the time being, we're just going to be right there and you know keep doing and keep what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. It's why such a fun. Not? It's such a fun business. I know. And, uh, I know. It's it's a, it gets into your blood, and yeah. you can't and you can't get it out. Yeah, I feel very fortunate, like many people in, in the trade say, to, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed teaching, uh, but the shift into book selling has been a very, you know, happy uh, shift, and uh, uh, it's never really felt like work, and you look forward to it every day. Yeah, it's um, a great job. Yeah, yeah, and Tina's been a huge part of it. She does all our shipping, and, uh, and, um, and there's a lot of that, um, you know, in relation to the internet. And, uh, and so, you know, she does an incredible job with all of that and keeps us focused and uh, nice. she watches. Focus is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you see as some of the challenges we face as booksellers as, as, as the years proceed? You know, I think um, there's so much that's, uh, so much that change has changed and uh, the idea that um, more and more and more if people just need the text of a book or a copy of the book or just want to be able to read something. Um, so much of it is online and Google Book and all the rest. And so uh, it's um, in a way uh, just harder and harder and harder to find material that um, is saleable and that there's demand for. So I mean it's becoming um, probably more of a rare, rare book market uh, in a sense. and. Um, and that mid-range material that used to be saleable and that you could, you know, uh, buy and sell is kind of disappearing. So it's just uh, it's tricky times. Everybody talks about ephemera. It's pushed lots and lots of yeah. people toward, you know, uh, one of or more yeah, unique, unique material. Um, and that's a consciousness that uh, you know that that we're so much aware of. Um, in a way, it's expanded what you might buy or look for and, and all the rest, but uh, at the same time, um, you know, we, there's so many books that we used to be able to sell that, you know, we can't really do much with anymore. A lot of that's the Amazon effect, uh, just pushing prices down and down and down, but, uh, uh, well, you know, I think it's just what it is. There were some wonderful, great books that we used to have in the 50s, 60s, and 70s that are now 40 copies on the internet. Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, each, it, it's a whole different, was a whole different world, and I suppose as time goes on, there'll be even more things that are, that are gonna come out. Yeah. I don't know what they are, but what do you think of some of the things that people will be collecting in the future? And it's a tough question, because yeah. if you knew the answer, you'll be rich, but. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, I, it's, um, you see these trends and things come and go, and here at the fair, I'm so conscious of cook, cookbooks and yeah. all this stuff related to food. Uh, it's fascinating, um, but I, I, you know, I don't have a firm fix on that. Where mm -hmm. where uh, collecting where we will be headed? It's uh, there's you can think of categories that are not what they used to be, and uh, that have kind of dropped out of the picture a little bit. But I'm I'm not good. I don't think at uh, predicting. You know, like you say, I wish I wish I were, but uh, yeah, no crystal yeah. ball for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no crystal ball for you. Yeah. Um, the the trade is is changing, and it's getting younger, and I think there are more booksellers interested in the visual material as no opposed question. to the hardbound. Yeah, no question, and and you're really conscious of that here again at the fair and out yeah. in California at the fair. Um, and the young people uh, coming in is obviously greatly encouraging and very oh, exciting, yeah. and they're sharp, and I think they are carving out, you know, their areas, um, um, even uh, including, you know, material and uh, 
literature from the 60s and 70s and yeah. 80s and sort of, you know, uh, establishing new markets in that regard. Yeah. Civil uh, rights movement, the, you know, all kinds of things. Absolutely, the, the political, all the way modern, political Lives stuff. Matter. Yeah, 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 no question. So there's a creativity that comes with that, I think, which is fabulous and really exciting to see. And, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm optimistic in that sense. I mean, that, uh, you know, every generation, you know, kind of uh, produces its booksellers. Yeah, and, uh, that's true. And they just have to be, you know, creative about what they take on, I guess. But, uh, no, I, 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 I'm still an optimist in that regard. And you're always going to run a show. Yeah, I, uh, I'd like to do it, you know, uh, Robert did it until he was 90, yeah. and uh, I'd like to stay at it <laughs> in his tradition. I don't know that I have his, uh, you know, strength in that regard, but uh, um, that's, that's my inspiration, I guess. I, I see, you know, uh, let's just keep, keep on and plugging away. Uh, it'll, be, it'll probably be mostly um, uh, internet-based. Um, it, it, Depending on what comes along, I mean, if we've got a collection that maybe would be uh, something we want to take to a fair, uh, but for now, I think that's probably where we're going to be focused. Yeah. Uh, how many people do you have working with you? With uh, Tina and myself and two others, so there's there's four of us, and um, like I say, they, uh, John and Karen, have been a, a, a big part of the effort, uh, cataloging stuff and putting stuff online, putting stuff on eBay. Finding things, uh, which is uh, often a challenge, you know. You, yeah, uh, without track, inventory, you, you don't have anything. Track something down. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Without yeah. inventory, dude, we'll all be screwed. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you have any problems uh, transferring your business to a computer-based situation? Were, were you a were you a bookseller? who had to use a computer, or were you a computer guy who became a bookseller? I was the former. Um, I, 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 it took a while for me to get the, uh, um, the hang of some of that. Um, we've used Book Tracker for our system, um, and now we've got four computers that are networked. Um, but I've had you know, help from different key people along the, the way to uh, sort of set that up. Um, I've gotten, I think, comfortable with it and better at it these days. And, uh, you know, I can keep track of stuff on the smartphone and all the rest. But, uh, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't take to it uh, <laughs> what a world in that. the early days. Yeah, I know. I mean, everything is so different. It's incredible. And they keep reporting that more and more books are sold, you know, via phone. Uh, yeah. Uh, which is not, not something I find easy at all, but... Uh, I guess we have to be conscious of it when we're, you know, oh, putting absolutely. things out there and listing things and tuned into it. So absolutely, I mean, the customer base is, is the customer base, and that's what we're going to have to be dealing with in the future. No question. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I I mentioned eBay, and I, I don't mean to overemphasize it, but one thing that's been nice in that regard is we have been able to build uh, a customer base that just kind of wants to buy there, yeah. and uh, and some of those people. Um, are, are um, buying local history in Ohio, Anna, and, and the stuff that we've always kind of handled. Yeah. Uh, but now, um, it, some more of it is paper and pamphlets and all the rest. So it's well, yeah, that's you know that's what they want. You, you don't find that stuff on the on the internet. And we try to feed that you know that yeah. collecting. It's, so. it's always it's always great to to find that kind of stuff. But basically speaking, um, it's a tough business now. It's a tough business, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it is. I sometimes, you know, uh, find myself, uh, well, as you know, you get lots of calls, and I've got this, and I've got that, and I've got yeah. books, and 90% and of it is not much yeah, interest. Right. Um, and I find myself saying, you know, it's sort of a brutal market out there it, it <laughs> these is, days. It is. Uh, so you have to be, you know, pretty creative and, um, and just try to, you know, keep going with it. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's tricky. How many walk-ins a day do you think you have? Very few. Very few. Yeah, very few. Um, and what's the point of having the, the shop? You know, we're, we've actually gone by appointment uh, yeah. these days, which I tell people sounds, you know, it sounds a little stuffy because we welcome people whenever, and we're there Monday through Friday, 10 to 5. Um, and so 
we've been there long enough now that there we do get the occasional uh, drop-in customer, and we've got local customers who will you know call up and uh, come pick something up. Yeah. Uh, but it's nothing like you know nothing the, like the old days. Right. No. And the bookseller, um, all that market. You know, I mean, we used to rely on not just uh, Robert Emerson, but uh, dozens and dozens of booksellers who traveled. You know, and, and like yourself. Yeah. yeah. And. Uh, would come and buying things for the shows and for the fairs and all the rest and all that is just you know it's a thing of the past yeah yeah and you know with the internet people can go and look at what you've got without physically leaving your house exactly yeah which which is nice for some people but frankly I, I think the most important thing is getting out there you know buying stuff directly learning something about everybody who's a customer yeah uh, especially in an open shop yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Do you, do you have any problems with pets? You know, we, um, one time we had, uh, it was after uh, Bob had come to Columbus, and we had rented a little space not far from where I live, and we stored books there, and we had a pretty serious uh, uh, theft, and uh, it was upsetting. It was actually a guy who eventually, it's a crazy story, but he eventually, um, stole a copy of the Maxwell Code from up in uh, the Hayes Presidential Library. Really? Uh, and uh, spent time in jail as a result of that, was apprehended. But before we were uh, aware of the, you know, of who he was and the trouble he was, uh, he actually stole stuff from us out of this uh, uh, separate space we had. Mm -hmm. Other than that, really, no. Well, you, know, you, you just have to think to yourself that with an open shop, you can't be watching everybody who's who's in there at the same time. But absolutely, do you have cameras. Or absolutely, something? we don't. We don't. And uh, you rely and, on your eyes. And right? never did. And just try to, yeah, sort of be conscious of it and uh, and be on guard. And like I say, yeah, twenty five years in the other space, and it was adjoining rooms, and you yeah, know there yeah. were there were opportunities that way. But we were pretty lucky that way. So uh, nothing. Yeah. Nothing you, major. You've closed that loophole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're not going to believe this, but we're just on 30 minutes. Michael, right? I appreciate it very yeah, much. We appreciate and, you uh, participating in the project, and I uh, hope you had a good time for 30 minutes anyhow. <laughs> I, I did. I enjoyed it. And again, I applaud you for, for taking on this project uh, and doing it. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing. I just, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping at some point to train some other people to do it because I don't I don't want to spend the rest of my life interviewing <laughs> <laughs>